at the Mother's Garden just outside the Atherton Hotel and it's almost time to start harvesting those peanuts. Now if you've never grown peanuts, peanuts is a fun crop to grow as it's a little bit different. What it does is it puts down these pegs um, off of the flowers down into the ground and that's where the peanut will actually grow underground. They're not like some of our other nuts that grow on trees, they do grow underground. And so it's about time to start digging these as we get closer and closer to frost. And what you'll find is some of these, they'll continue to peg as long as they can continue to grow. But you're going to want to harvest these, pull them out, and allow them to dry before you, or cure before you actually eat them. Now, just like our produce has changed over the season, as the cooler temperatures come in, it's time to start harvesting that out of the garden, whether it's sweet potatoes or some of those last minute peppers. Just like the produce that we're harvesting has changed through the season, our recipes are also going to be changing. And Barbara Brown is here with a solution for a recipe that combines two ingredients that you might not think about pairing. Today I'm doing peanut butter stew. Now this is something you can use with ingredients you've purchased or raised or have stockpiled in your pantry uh, and need to rotate out because uh, any emergency may be down the line. You want to make sure that that food stays fresh. So I'm going to start with a cup of instant brown rice. Now you could use rice that you're going to cook, but you may have to fiddle a little bit with the amount of liquid that you add uh, because this is going to absorb less. Uh, then I'm going to add two cups of chicken broth. This could be another type of broth as well, whatever you happen to have on hand. I wouldn't go as far as using just water though, or you're going to lose a lot of flavor. Also to this, I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of minced onion and a clove of garlic that's been minced or a teaspoon of commercially chopped garlic. Uh, you could also use dried garlic if you wanted to. And if you needed to, you could also use dehydrated onion. It just won't have quite as good of a flavor to it. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of ground ginger, an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper or red pepper, and a half a teaspoon of salt. This is kosher salt, so if you're using regular salt, you might want to cut that back. You could also cut it back and let it uh, be added at the end when you taste it to see how the seasoning is going. And then I've got a can of diced tomatoes, or you could use whole tomatoes or a pint of tomatoes that you've canned yourself and then about two cups of sweet potato. Now this is when the question comes in on how long the cooking time will be. You notice I've cut it into a little bit of a larger chop. Uh, so if you wanted it to cook faster, I would probably cut them in about half that size. Those are gonna go in there as well. And then we're going to bring this all to a boil and then reduce the heat and cover it and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. So basically we're going to give it time for the rice to cook and most of the potato to be cooked. Because my potatoes are larger, it may take 15 to 20 minutes. So before you go on to the next step, check it for the potato tenderness. All right, we're going to stir together a half a cup of creamy peanut butter and one and a quarter cups of milk. Now I use a whisk because these are two things that don't naturally want to blend really well and I kind of start out a little bit slow. You can use whatever kind of milk you have. You notice this one's a little bit yellower. This is non-fat dry milk uh, that's been rehydrated and if that's what you're trying to rotate out of your house, uh, then you need to uh, rehydrate it early enough that the flavors have, have time. The sugar in milk does not blend back well, does not go into solution well. So if you can leave it overnight at least in the refrigerator and then if you're just going to drink it, make sure you drink it really cold, uh, that will help. But those things will give the sugar time to uh, blend back. Uh, the non-fat dry milk keeps for a long time uh, until you open it. And then the keeping time is much shorter. So you can see uh, once it starts to age, it starts to turn a little bit yellower, uh, which is when you wanna, wanna make sure you use it. And using it in something like this, where uh, the flavors are gonna be a little bit more disguised uh, and the color is going to be disguised, uh, is going to be to your advantage. So I've checked and our sweet potatoes were tender. So I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit uh, we're going to let this cook together for about five minutes, so blend it in well. 
Uh, give it about five more minutes, but you don't need to cover it at this point. Uh, it, in part because when you cover milk, it tends to uh, build up, uh, but also uh, because uh, you want to keep an eye on everything here, and, and we're no longer trying to cook the rice, which was uh, the point of keeping the lid on it to begin with. So about five minutes. Remember, you would have checked the sweet potatoes to make sure they were done before you did this because there's not a lot of cooking time left, and you don't want the milk itself to have to, to uh, cook very long. You can see that it's thickened up nicely as a stew. Uh, however, m my issue with it at this point is it's just not very pretty. So we're gonna add some green to it in the form of about three cups, uh, three to four cups of coarsely chopped baby spinach. You can use other spinach as well. Uh, you're just gonna need to remove the stems before you uh, put it in. You could also use frozen spinach if you've dehydrate or thawed it and then uh, squeeze some of the juice out. Because it's a soup, it's not essential that it be as squeezed dry as it is for some of the other things that we do. This we're going to let cook for about three to four minutes, just until the spinach is nice and wilted, and then it's going to be done. Okay, you can see this has definitely become a nice stew. It's got a lot of color. It's full of nutrition, full of flavor. I think you're really going to like this one. I'm going to sprinkle it with a little bit of green onion, just to give it a little bit more color, and then a few chopped peanuts give it a little bit more texture. I hope you'll like it. It's peanut butter stew for Oklahoma Gardening. I'm Barbara Brown. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Thank you.